centre for arrival and departures, right circuit, frequency 132, decimal 8. Runway 29, left circuit, training left circuit, frequency 123, decimal 6. Runway is wet. Runway 29, right, not available, except for taxiing aircraft with an ATC clearance. Big variable 3 knots. Humility greater than 10 kilometres, crowd view 1200, scattered 2500. Damage to 0, NH101C. First contact makes 10 ground or town and a 4 seat. Mission Bravo. Alright, we've got Bravo, winds light, it's a bit of cloud around 1016, and that's within 60 feet. 1016, and that's within 60 feet, both indicating 20. Thanks, Sangran. Good morning. X-ray 62s at Diamond Day 62s. IFR, banks down to Ballina, 1 POB. Taxis, Kilo, receive Bravo. Request taxi and airways clearance. No run up required. X-ray 62, uh, ground taxi, I runway 29 right, holding for now for 8, runway 29 centre. I will advise the airways clearance. Taxi via 29 right to holding point Alpha 8, runway 29 centre. X-ray 62. X-ray 62, uh, yeah. you are cleared to Ballina via Richmond, flight plan route. Uh, the wind's very Banks down 9 way. departure. Climb by seat to 3000. Runway to walk 1553. Clear to Ballina via Richmond, planned route. Banks down 9 departure. Climb by seat 3000, squawk 1553. X-ray 62. Thank you, contact tower. We'll contact tower, X-ray 62. Thanks, and target A, X-ray 62, holding point Alpha 8 ready. X-ray 62, report passing 1,500, Santa Clifford takeoff. Roman Santa Clifford takeoff, we'll co-X-ray 62. Okay, landing light on, pump left, pump right, transponder set. Uh, yep, that stays on. Peter heat on, parking brake released. Flap set, everything's good, trim's good, and fuel's on. Store heat fails normal, on the ground. And then I normally get it, and then it clears. I'm clear for tape off, clear your left, clear your right. Okay, that's on, check, track cloud. Full power, load's good, RPM's good, everything's in the green. Airspeed's alive, 50 cross-checked. Third, uh, get out of my way. Okay, 78. Tap the brakes. You're up. Sydney departures, go to HO62, bank stand 9 departure, passing 2100 for 3000. X-ray 62 departures uh, identified. Climb by set to 5,000. Climb by set 5,000, X-ray 62. Okay, getting out of the blue sky. It's nice. It's all cloudy this morning. Look at that. Fantastic. Keep correcting for that increase in wind. Get us back on a 290. Four degrees to the left. All right, there's our route today. Uh, so Richmond, uh, from Richmond we fly uh, via Maycor and then basically... Um, X-ray 62, cleared Richmond. Clear direct Richmond, X-ray 62. Richmond, direct to enter, enter, nav mode. GPS is green, Richmond is indicated. And 3-5 for 5. Stop the flashing. Yeah, it looks all right. I've been having a bit of an issue with the camera, sort of just washing out. Um, I don't notice on my last video, it was just all uh, overexposed. Um, it doesn't look too bad today. Let's see how we go. It may be just it can't handle that um, that level of uh, sun glare in the morning, the low sun. Uh, but I suspect it's just a settings thing. I'm trying the high um, high dynamic range setting today. At least I think that's what setting I'm in. Altitude select, 200 to go. Cow flaps would be closed here, but we don't have any. Um, and we're levelling off at 5,000. All right, we're uh, overhead Richmond. Got some pretty nice uh, clouds um, around, which looks pretty cool. 
Um, we're at 9,000. And uh, what I thought I'd do, I've just re-registered for the uh, Connext um, service. And I thought maybe it'd be a good, um, a good thing to show. So I'll put this camera on. And what I wanted to show you is, uh, so here we are, 9,000, uh, doing 182 knots. Um, we're at a headwind of, um, I just fixed uh, traffic, uh, looks good. Zoom that out a little bit now, we're in the cruise. Uh, now over here, uh, what... MS240, are you just after 120, yeah? This is our... Um, um, after flight 416, yeah. I'm going to show you how this weather works. So connect data request, and we press enter to that. And then what you get is you get um, present position uh, up to Ballina is the destination. Uh, the flight plan uh, for the next 200 nautical miles, and you can change that. You can make it uh, 150 miles or whatever, so we'll go 200 miles, why not? And the diameter or the route width uh, is uh, 100 miles. Uh, update rate, I can change, I can make it, give me an update every, say, 15 minutes, and I send request. And uh, what that'll do, in a minute, it says contacting Connext, and soon it'll download the weather. I'll show you out the window. It's a nice view today. Big uh, layer of cloud below us. It's receiving the weather. Four seconds to go. Zero seconds. There you go. You can see what it looks like. So, what you got is this is our weather. Um, and down here, you can see we've got precipitation. Um, so, we can turn that off or on. And you can see not much um, rain around. Infrared satellite. Um, so, if there was. Um, Team seems to not really show that much in terms of the uh, low-level cloud, but it seems to show high-level cloud. Um, detected lightning. You have the choice of showing... Sorry, not detected lightning. It's uh, data link lightning. So any lightning that's... Um, and I'll just have a look up here at Ballina. You can see, actually, Ballina does have a bit of weather uh, out to the coast. Um, maybe we can... Um, on so it's got a bit of weather around up in uh, Ballina, so that's something to watch out for. And you can see a bit of cloud there as well. That's what the grey stuff is. Um, okay, uh, so you can choose between um, on the on the other map. You can choose between the data link lightning or the storm scope. And I'll come I'll come to that in a minute. Um, Sigmet Air Mets, Metars, and on more weather you can get the wind. And I can get the wind for nine thousand. So you can see at nine thousand. Um, it's, uh, you know, basically where I am now. I've got the wind from uh, my left, uh, maybe 10 knots. Um, and you can see up here it's showing us 9 knots. Um, if I go 6,000, uh, it's a little bit stronger perhaps. Um, and 12,000, it becomes more of a tailwind, it appears, when I go higher. 15,000, it's uh, a little bit stronger again. So... We'll put it at 9,000, that's where we are. Uh, we'll go back and back. And now when you go to the actual um, navigation map, uh, you see it overlays, which is quite nice. Uh, you can see the um, on map options here. What you can choose is you can either have the storm scope or the data link lightning. So if I pick storm scope, it turns off the data link lightning. Or I can go back to the data link lightning. I can have precipitation, or I can have the weather radar. So if I choose weather radar, the weather radar is in standby at the moment. Um, let's turn that on. Weather radar mode weather. And we'll set that up. So if we go back, vertical, it's on 80 miles, that's probably okay. It looks pretty set up now. Uh, with that tilt, so we might tilt it up a little bit. 6.75, that looks pretty good. Go back to horizontal. And that's at 60 miles. We'll zoom it out, we'll give it at 90, or even uh, 120 miles. See how that looks. 
Wait the vertical for a minute. Sending a departure is Yankee 2 at Lima 1,000. Set that on the same. Yankee 2 at Lima departure, then I'll find a climb by Sid 8,000. So that looks good. Sid 8,000, Yankee 2 at Lima. And I look out the window, and that pretty well aligns with what we can see out the window. A lot of low level cloud, uh, not a lot of high level. There's something over there, which is probably that. And there's something uh, out that way as well. So yeah, that's um, that's making sense with what we're seeing out the window. Um, so now if we go back to map um, and we zoom out, I'll show you what I meant. So you can see now you're getting the weather radar sweeping here. And if you go to map options, you can either have the weather radar or the precipitation view from the data link. You can't have both. It's confusing. Both are showing, that's showing some weather out here and the weather radar. Okay, so it's showing some weather around Williamtown uh, on the on the radar. Let's zoom that in. Let's have a look. Yeah, a little bit of weather around Williamtown, nothing really. Uh, on the precipitation page, you see it's not really showing it, but it is showing these flags here around Williamtown indicating uh, they're, they're not... Um, they're not VFR, they might be low VFR or something like that. So there you go, quick update on um, on the uh, on the weather radar and uh, setup and also the data link. Uh, I'll uh, have some breakfast now and I'll come back to you a bit later on in the cruise where we uh, we check out uh, the uh, conditions at Ballina. See you then. Okay, well, hi guys, we're uh, in the cruise. Um, uh, all pretty comfortable so far. We had some pretty low cloud over Sydney on departure. Uh, it's all below us by quite a way now. Uh, we are on an airway, um, basically heading up north uh, towards Ballina. And uh, Ballina is the airport for Byron Bay, so it's called the Ballina Byron Gateway. So I thought maybe we'd just check in and have a look at a couple of things. So firstly, um, uh, the weather. So with regards to the weather, uh, it looks like we've got, um, I might put this on and uh, and show you a couple of things. So we're getting uh, 190 knots TAS, uh, got us at 92% power, um, but our ground speed's 182, so we've got a bit of a headwind. Um, what we'll do, we'll have a look at, um, at the weather uh, first. So what you can see here is uh, we don't have too much weather along our route, however, as we get closer to Ballina, um, there's a fair bit of weather off the coast here. Um, so that's rain, and uh, it's not really that far away from Ballina. So, and they've had, I just checked the uh, the metal. They've had about uh, five or six mil since 9 a.m. So there's been a bit of um, been a rain around. Uh, what we can do, we can have a look at the uh, weather by hovering over it. And uh, if we hover over Ballina and press enter, it then brings up the weather. And what it gives us is um, the meta, and it also decodes it for you, which is pretty cool. Uh, there it is. So currently, it doesn't look too bad. 35 minutes old, wind direction 230, wind speed 3, three knots, visibility is good. 5,900 scattered, uh, and uh, 1016. The TAF is also presented down here, and uh, that all that also provides it in a decoded format uh, down here. And but the one thing that I'm just uh, noticing is there's an inter. So if I go here, you can see this inter. There's uh, from uh, 1 8 to 0 to 1 9 0 6. So that's pretty much all day. 3,000 visibility, showers of moderate rain, broken 1,000, scattered 2,500, towering cumulus. Uh, the next thing, the probability 30s um, uh, passed, that was fog in the morning. Uh, but we could have towering cumulus, a uh, bit of bumps, a bit of cloud, a bit of low-level cloud down to 1,000 feet. So that's something to look out for. 
um, and just um, something that um, I need to keep an eye on. Uh, but again, this is why I really like this. Um, I really like this view because you, you you're not going to pick this stuff up on your weather radar. It's just too far out. But you can start thinking about Alpha Contact Center One Two Three about all this weather, and uh, you know what are we going to do if uh, if things get uh, uh, if that weather gets worse. Um, we know it's inches, we've got 30 minutes, we've easily got 30 minute holding fuel, no problem. So we'll just hold, that's our plan. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll hold and then um, I don't mind the idea of um, attempting a, an approach and doing a missed approach. Um, that's all good practice, so I'm happy to do that. Um, another thing I want to say is thank you to uh, the 250 odd people that have subscribed um, to this channel. Um, uh, it's awesome, uh, thanks for subscribing. Uh, and uh, hopefully you're enjoying it. Uh, I'm really enjoying making the videos. Uh, it gives me a bit more of a purpose to the flight. It's fantastic. Uh, and it's a bit of fun. A new skill for me is editing these videos. I'm, I know I'm not great at it, but um, you know, it's all, you know, hopefully I can get a bit better at it. Uh, but um, people subscribing um, gives me motivation to do that. So uh, please subscribe if you haven't. Uh, it's great. Thanks for those who have. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, something that... Um, uh, I'm the reason uh, I have this plane and what I'm planning to do with it. So uh, you might have noticed that my um, sort of name on this is um, Diamond Air Taxis. And uh, the name pretty much gives it away. Uh, I want to use this aircraft to start a, an air taxi service. And an air taxi service uh, that is, I guess, a bit different to normal charter flying, which is you know, you go on a website, you'll, you'll look up a company, you might fill in a form or call a 1300 number or something. Someone will get back to you in a, in a, you know, maybe that day, maybe the next day. They'll put together a quote and they'll send you a quote. And uh, you might like that quote or you might not like that quote, but uh, the process is not instant and it's, I guess, not conducive to you having a play around with different flight options uh, because every time you want to change your route, somebody physically has to go and figure all that out. And you kind of feel like you're putting people, you're kind of wasting their time unless you're not going to go through with it. So what I want to do is um, come up with a, an online uh, booking platform, which uh, basically will enable you, like you do when you book an airline ticket, um, you'll be able to go on, you'll say, I want to go from Sydney Bankstown to uh, Ballina Byron, um, I want to. Uh, I've got three passengers. Uh, these are my bags, and I want to go next Tuesday at 11 a.m. And you'll enter those details. And what the system will do is it will know uh, the availability of the aircraft. So it'll have an availability schedule for the aircraft. It'll know its maintenance, its planned maintenance, and it will know when it's booked out for other jobs. It'll know when pilots that are qualified to fly that aircraft are available um, and it, so it'll check the availability of pilots uh, it'll know the duty time of the pilots and it'll know the you know when they've got time off booked and all that kind of stuff that'll be in the system so it'll match pilots to aircraft it will know the weather so it will use the same weather that Forflight use which is an IBM product uh, from the weather company um, and so we'll be looking up into that weather, which has a 15-day window. And so we'll be able to look 15 days ahead. And um, so if you're booking within that 15-day window, we'll be able to confirm that the weather uh, forecast says that we'll be able to fly that day. Um, and we'll be able to take off from Bankstown and we'll be able to land at Ballina on that day uh, at that time. So we'll be able to check all of that. We'll also be able to check the winds and we'll be able to check that the uh, winds are not exceeding the um, the max demonstrated crosswind for the aircraft because we'll also know the runway directions. So we'll, we'll calculate all of this, and not only that, we'll also use the passenger information that you've given us. The, we're going to ask you for the weights of the passengers, and we're going to be asking you uh, for your baggage details. So. And we also know the pilot that's assigned, so we know the weight of the pilot. So we can do all of the weight and balance, and we can we know the distance um, between those locations. So therefore, we can work out the fuel required. So we can do a weight and balance instantly. Uh, well, not instantly, but you know, at computer speed. So we can do all of this 
within a matter of seconds. And we can tell you uh, that the flight will cost you X dollars and it is available to uh, take you at uh, 11 a.m. next Tuesday with your passengers and your baggage. Um, you then say, book now, and uh, it will take your credit card and you'll make your payment. And you're done. That's it. Turn up and go. And so you drive your car, you turn up at Bankstown, it's free parking, uh, and you jump in uh, the aircraft, and five minutes later we start up and we go. Um, so that's the idea. Uh, I think this is a beautiful, absolutely beautiful plane to fly in. It's so comfortable. Um, it's fast. It's quiet. Um, and it's modern. It's got air conditioning. Uh, I think passengers are going to really find this quite comfortable. It's a different experience. You're flying at lower levels. So you get a beautiful uh, view out, out the window. Not sort of 40,000, 35,000 feet where you can't really see that much. Uh, you actually really do feel a bit more connected with um, the terrain and what you're seeing and, and you can sort of work out what the towns are and uh, you can enjoy the, the scenery a lot more. Uh, for those that are interested, um, you know, someone will probably sit up front and they can um, enjoy uh, learning a bit more about flying and how the systems work and um, you can listen into the air traffic frequency if you want. So I think it's going to be a, a different experience than flying airlines. Uh, it's not going to be as expensive as flying in something like a private jet, maybe a third of the price. Um, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be, you know, more expensive probably than flying on an airline. But it's it's a it's a private experience. You go when you want, you come back when you want. It's your schedule. Fly your way, is the uh, is the sla uh, the slogan, and uh, I think um, it will. That's that's exactly it. Fly your way. Um, fly when you want, and uh, and come back when you want. Take who you want within the limits of the aircraft. Um, so that's the business. Uh, it's registered. It's it's uh, very very much under development. We have the aircraft now. Uh, I'm doing basically these flights as trial services uh, to places where I think people will want to go, and uh, and uh, I'm also looking to. Um, bring in other pilots who have particular, particularly pilots who have an aircraft like this, a Diamond DA-62 or maybe a modern Baron, um, where uh, maybe uh, they're commercially uh, qualified, they've got an aircraft, it's maybe privately used at the moment, but they wouldn't mind uh, doing something with a bit more purpose, uh, doing a bit of charter flying, and they can come on board with, um, with us and offer services out of other uh, locations uh, like Ballina or Gold Coast or Melbourne um, so we can start to service other cities um, more efficiently um, but that's the idea that's what we're doing keen to hear your thoughts um, you know would you um, is that something you'd be interested in uh, in, in doing uh, with friends and family um, I think uh, you know you can really interesting flights I think would be places like Lord Howe Island a couple of hours out of Sydney uh, you know places where the schedule's not that convenient for if you want to go for a day trip uh, we can we can depart at 6am or even earlier and come back um, you know 5pm, 6pm and you can spend pretty much the entire day on the beach uh, but not have to worry about accommodation um, you can you can enjoy enjoy the, the, the place without um, without having to uh, to stay overnight um, there'll be people who want to go and check out property. Maybe they're thinking about buying a farm, or they've, they've got a they've got a holiday house uh, at the beach somewhere. It takes them six hours or eight hours to drive there. They may just want to jump in a plane and go up and check on their holiday house, or check out a property that they uh, are interested in purchasing. But you know, it's a long way. It's a big commitment to go and see it. Well, this is perfect for that kind of customer. There'll be doctors who want to go and do surgeries out in regional towns. Uh, you know, it might be a four or five hour drive. They need to stay overnight. It means they, they, it affects their ability to do work back in Sydney or in a, in a major city. They, they lose that opportunity because of having to stay overnight in a regional town. Uh, now they can fly out in the morning, fly back at night. Um, again, so, so I think, uh, you know, medical people would be a potential customer, government uh, people who need to go and uh, fly for, for, for work but need to 
work on a schedule. Obviously, business people who need to go to a meeting in Canberra or whatever it might be. Um, I think there's lots of um, there's lots of use cases, um, and for a, a service that's not particularly expensive, is safe. We've got twin engine plane. We've got de-icing. We've got weather radar. We've got more technology in this than a lot of modern a lot of um, a lot of jets have uh, with um, all this um, Iridium satellite data link um, for weather. Um, and so we've got a lot of technology on board uh, that makes this really quite a safe option and um, and a reliable option. So um, hopefully you like the idea and uh, give me some comments. I'm keen to hear what you think. Uh, and uh, hopefully in the future you'll give me some business. Uh, so... Uh, that's enough of that for now. Uh, we'll uh, might, uh, have a bit more of a break and then uh, we'll start setting up for the uh, approach to Ballina. We'll check in then. See you later. All right, so we got the weather um, and updated. Uh, it looks like um, 220 degrees, which would make it runway 24. Um, however, I'm coming in from the, from the south so what I want to do is uh, is approach via runway 06 uh, because the TAF does have the wind swinging around to 110. And um, so what we might do is approach runway 06 and <clears throat> uh, break off that approach and join a uh, basically do a break right to join a left downwind for runway 24, which is a left circuit. Um, and uh, or if the wind changes, we're uh, all good to land on runway 06. So we've got a plan either way. I've checked the NOTAMs, it's all good. I've texted the fuel truck uh, so he knows we're coming in. Um, Ballina is a little bit different in that there's also this, um, this um, AIP SUP, which is a Ballina Surveillance Flight Information Service. Um, I've just read through that. Uh, essentially, um, when you make your initial call, it's Ballina information and Ballina traffic. Um, so there's actually a, um, a service, a, a traffic information service, which is provided to, to all IFR, VFR VFR aircraft due to the traffic, uh, higher traffic area. passing um, it, it, It's all pretty straightforward. Really, it's about having a radio and making sure you're making the appropriate radio calls. Um, one thing uh, I'm actually not clear on, which doesn't really affect the approach and landing, but it would affect my departure, is whether or not the Surveillance Information Service can provide me with my IFR clearance. It does have an IFR departure report that I'm required to do. Um, Sierra Quebec, Charlie, contact Melbourne Centre, 135. I actually couldn't see anywhere in here where it says that they provide a clearance. So perhaps you just provide a departure report um, and then uh, get your clearance from centre um, after you've departed, like you would any other airport where you can't get a clearance. Um, I'm not sure. I might ask the question when I'm on the ground to the guys who are actually uh, flying and out of here all the time. They'll know for sure the answer. Anyway, um, so we're expecting a little bit of weather off to the side. Actually, the weather at the airport looks pretty good <clears throat> at the moment. I might zoom in here and see if I can see anything clearer. Uh, yeah, I mean... The weather's clearly there, but it's off to the coast. Uh, one thing I've briefed myself on is when we do the approach is that if we have to go uh, onto the missed approach, uh, we'll be flying straight out, kind of straight out towards the weather. There's also there's also some uh, restricted uh, or danger in restricted airspace to the south, uh, restricted airspace to the south. So. Um, I need to make sure I make a fairly, um, uh, I need to turn back towards land and make a turn towards the south because the MSA is higher towards the northwest. So make a turn towards the south and then back around to the west. Um, uh, straight after that missed approach would probably be the best thing to do. 4,400. That's my 457, thanks. Okay, well, uh, we... Vertical track. Vertical track, we're one minute from top of descent. Uh, I've bugged 6,400 because 6,400 is the grid lower safe. We're not actually on the airway, we're tracking direct to the Ballina Whiskey Echo initial approach fix. So we can't use the airway. What we can use is the uh, grid lower safe. 
uh, which uh, is, well, now 2,500. Uh, we've changed oh, grid. So now we can um, plug all the way down to 3,200. Uh, I've got an amended route uh, when you're ready to copy. 511 mark, copy the brake break, all stations in the Ballina circuit, traffic X-ray 62, Diamond 62 inbound by the west for a 15 mile final runway 06, estimated the circuit at time 51, not yet on frequency, and I will confirm with them when they're on frequency if they want to rearrange for 2-4. Ballina information and Ballina traffic X-ray 62, Diamond DR 62, uh, on descent through uh, 10,000. And uh, inbound via the uh, Whiskey Echo for the RMP 06. Uh, I understand uh, two fours in use, and I'll break off once visual for runway two four. X-ray 62, Ballina, g'day. Traffic in the circuits. You've got Victor Lemma, Mark Robinson 22 doing circuits for runway two four. Juliet Delta Bravo, a Baron is taxiing for the northern training area. Correction. Uh, they are a Comanche for the Northern Training Area. Juliet Mark Lima is the Baron, and they'll be departing for Bundaberg. Should be well clear. And uh, copy, you'll be breaking off the runway 24. The wind off the Meta was 230 degrees, 5 knots. Uh, copy traffic and copy wind, x 62, thanks. What I'll do, I'll change my minimums. Um, it's a thousand feet circuit, so I'll, I'll, I'll go down to 1500. What, what I'll do... ...1,500, and the reason I'll set that is it's 500 feet above the circuit height, so that's the height I'm going to be at for joining the circuit. And we'll break right and join a left circuit for runway 24. Yeah, I mean, I can't really get through this layer of cloud without applying some sort of approach at the moment. Um, but if I get visual on uh, on the approach, I can I can and I'm visual with the airfield as well. I can just manoeuvre uh, and join uh, downwind basically, go all the way down to a thousand feet and uh, join downwind, extended downwind. Ballon traffic X ray 62 Diamond DR 62 is on a one five mile final runway zero six. Uh, we're descending through four thousand three hundred. What we'll do is we'll descend down to uh, uh, join a, a break right to join a left circuit for runway two four uh, Ballon. Traffic Ballina and Diamond 62. Comanche Juliet Delta Bravo is rolling 2-4. I'll make a right turn at 1,500. Ballina. Hey, copy that. Thanks, X-Ray 62. making a right turn. And Ballina traffic, X-Ray 62 is on a 7 mile final runway 06. We're going to break right at uh, 1,500 feet. Join our left circuit, runway 2-4. Ballina. X-ray 62, Juliet Data Bravo is turned to right, crosswind, you're clear. I copy that, thanks. X-ray 62. Minimums. We're at 1500 now. Just put that gear down, it slows down a bit. We're actually not visual yet. Heading mode, heading bugged, LNAV mode. We're on a four mile final, still can't see the runway. Can't circle until two and a half, 2.6. Always ahead of me, according to that. Okay, where are you? And X ray 62 is visual now, and uh, breaking right to join a left circuit for runway 24, Ballina. Okay, we're visual. Uh, we are within 2.6 miles, and what we're going to do? ABS. Two fours are runway, and let's get us down now to a thousand feet. Circuit height. Julia Mark Lima, contact approach one two three days more five. Expect clearance. Uh, one, two, three, decimal five, Juliet Mark Lamar. Okay, speed's good. Runway's there. Ballon traffic x 62 is a left downwind runway 24 uh, for a full stop. Ballon.
All right, we're a thousand feet. Let's get the autopilot off now. Brakes, undercarriage is down. T's and P's in the green. Landing taxi lights on, pumps on, harnesses on, air conditioning's off. You've got to be careful you don't end up in cloud. That was low cloud right there. Um, I could just stay visual, but if I lost it, I needed to go back to the missed approach point and uh, do the missed approach. Um, I'm circling the land is what I'm doing. Circling land, staying within the circling area. Uh, but I have to stay visual with the um, the runway. I could have also descended further to get under that cloud, but um, I didn't need to. Okay, we're a beam. First stage of flap. Speed's good. Ballon traffic X-ray 62s on a left base runway 24, Ballon. Oh, it's beautiful up here. What a nice day. Thought it was going to be raining and horrible. Stunning. Look at that. So nice. Okay, clear right, clear centre, clear left. 100 knots. Looking good. 700 feet. Victor, Lemma Mike, confirm, clear the runway, establish on the southern grass. Victor, Lemma Mike, establish on the southern grass. Doing not much. I'm having a tray 62 turns, final runway 24. Oh, no. Okay, runway is clear. There's some birds there. Let's go for the uh, happy. Alright, we're coming back to uh, blue line now. 5 for 90, there's 90. 3 green, no red. Landing flap. No cow flaps. Always clear. And my radio calls. Red stop checked. Tiny bit of wind from the left. Identified and raised. Got a helicopter. Issue with that. And Ballon information, Ballon and traffic. x 62 is located. Runway 24, cancel star. x 62, Ballon and Starch, done better. x 62, thanks. Landing lights off. Fuel. Fuel pumps. Alright, we're here. Let's go say hi. It's pretty hot. G'day. Hello. How are you? 